Coffee is a flowering genus of tree that produces fruit. So yes, there is such a thing as a coffee fruit. And the coffee we grind and brew are the roasted seeds of that fruit. <laughs> Commonly called a coffee cherry, the fruit of a coffee tree is technically a droop. A droop is a botanical term for when a fleshy, fruity part surrounds an inner shell which contains a seed. In the case of coffee, usually there are two seeds inside of each droop. These seeds are the raw green coffee beans. Coffee fruit is not technically a cherry, and the seeds are not technically beans, but this is very common nomenclature I will continue to use. Let's take a closer look at the coffee cherry. Its structure can be divided into several parts. Exocarp, the outer layer of the fruit, also known as the skin. Mesocarp, the middle layer of the fruit, which consists of a fleshy outer layer called the pulp. Endocarp, the inner shell that protects the seeds, commonly called the parchment. And finally, the seed. This is the coffee bean, which is wrapped in a further layer called the testa or silver skin. The mesocarp contains many complex compounds, and depending on how the coffee is processed, these will be shared to varying degrees with the seed. Let's take a look at some of these compounds. Sugars. As much as 9% of the coffee cherry is sucrose and some polysaccharides. These sugars are not directly shared between the mucilage and the seed, however, and the sugars present in the seed are generally lost during roasting. This suggests that the sweetness perceived in coffee is not owed so much to the sugars, but it has more to do with volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. As the name suggests, these compounds are volatile and easily evaporate, contributing to the aroma of brewed coffee. Additionally, they can enhance our perception of sweetness in the taste and aroma. It's important to note that many of these compounds are not part of the fruit while it is on the tree, but are formed when the fruit begins to ferment during processing. Additional volatile compounds are formed during the roasting process too, and can contribute to fruity, floral, and even spicy flavors. Next are organic acids. The mesocarpin seed contain acids, such as citric and malic acid. These will break down a bit during the roasting process, but will contribute to the acidity of the coffee. Polyphenols, such as caffeoliquinic acids and specifically chlorogenic acid, are another important source of flavor and acidity in coffee, and they're often touted for numerous health benefits, including being antioxidants. The balance of acids in coffee is a very complex topic that I will cover in more detail in a future video. The coffee fruit is a versatile ingredient in itself beyond being the cradle of the coffee bean. It can be dried and brewed as a tea called cascara that often tastes, unsurprisingly, a bit like a light roasted coffee with a sweet and fruity flavor. Cascara contains caffeine and an abundance of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And because of these antioxidant properties, coffee fruit is also used extensively in beauty products. Polyphenols play an important role in protecting plants from ultraviolet light. This property can be applied to cosmetic products to protect and promote healthy skin. You can drink and wear your coffee. In a less glamorous role, leftover coffee fruit mucilage is used as a fertilizer and livestock feed. There are many, many more properties and uses for coffee fruit beyond the scope of this video. I have left some good material for further reading in the description. Did you know coffee was a fruit? Have you seen coffee growing on trees? I would love to know in the comments. Thanks for watching.